The Portland Trailblazers this season have gone through possibly the most hardships and have possibly had the most enduring season out of any NBA team who is going to be playing in Orlando next week. When the regular season went to its stoppage in the middle of March, the Portland Trailblazers were sitting at 29-37 and 37 and are in the ninth spot currently in the West. Probably the biggest reason for their lack of success this year has been the obvious injury bug that has plagued the Portland Trailblazers throughout this season. They knew going into the year that Yusuf Nurkic was probably not going to be playing, and not only that, but they ended up losing Zach Collins for all but three games, and they ended up losing Rodney Hood 20 games into the season due to a torn Achilles. Those three players alone missed a combined 174 games, and all three players were really playing at their career highs when they had their respective injuries. Rodney Hood was shooting about 50% from the three-point line. Zach Collins was chipping in a healthy 10 points and four rebounds off the bench. And Yusuf Nurkic was almost making a late, you know, post-All-Star push to be considered one of the next best big men in the NBA. However, not only were there problems with injuries this year, there just seemed to be problems integrating the new players on the team to integrate them into the, into the system, to integrate them into their culture. I mean, they brought in guys like Carmelo Anthony, Hassan Whiteside. They started relying on guys like Anthony Simmons, Gary Trent Jr. They even traded for Trevor Ariza halfway through the season. They had a lot of players on this roster who weren't really used to playing their role that they were in. And that probably was also an equal reason as to why they weren't able to produce the same success that they had last season. However, now they are at the point where they are able to call up their injured big men in Zach Collins and Yusuf Nurkic and bring them back to the roster for this Orlando playoff push that they are hoping to make during this August and July stretch that they have. Like I said, Yusuf Nurkic and Zach Collins pretty much have not played I mean, Zach Collins played three games, Yusuf Nurkic played zero games, and it is somewhat difficult to bring two, especially big men, back from respective injuries into, you know, a playoff push. However, the Portland Trailblazers do have the advantage of pretty much having somewhat of a training camp period before they go into their playoff push. Yusuf Nurkic is able to get his legs back under him and get back to not really game speed, but get somewhat back to the ability of playing a game, playing a healthy 20 to 30 minutes a game, and being a solid contributing piece on a playoff pushing team. And now with those two guys coming back, not only are they able to rely on the contributions that those two injured big men would be able to bring back to the Blazers, they're also now able to rely on guys that they didn't think they were going to have to rely on through the season, like Anthony Simons and Gary Trent Jr., even guys like Wenyan Gabriel throughout this training camp have impressed the Portland Trailblazers coaching staff throughout the, you know, training camp period that they had. And now the question is being asked if the Portland Trailblazers are able to make it into that eighth spot, whether they win it outright or they have to go through the play-in period with the Memphis Grizzlies. If they do end up taking that eighth spot, how good of a chance do they have against the Los Angeles Lakers? And I would agree with Charles Barkley that they have a pretty good chance at beating the Los Angeles Lakers in a seven-game series. As we all know, the playoffs in the Orlando bubble are not going to be anything similar to a playoff series that we've seen before. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest advantages a team has in a playoff series is the thought of home court advantage. And that's probably one of the biggest strengths that any team has is you know, playing on their home court, playing in their home city for a given one to two game stretch and having a team who is not in an area that they're, you know, comfortable with or they don't know their way around the town, whatever it is. It is an advantage to be playing on your own home area and that advantage is completely stripped away. Not only that, the complete fatigue of a, you know, constant plane ride back from LA to Portland, Portland to LA, back to Portland, back to LA, that that constant flying, <laughs> the constant flying is not there for these two teams. And while that advantage is going to both teams, I think the advantage helps the Portland Trailblazers even more because they would have been that team who would have to play a majority of their games on the road for a playoff push. And they don't have to go through that during this Orlando playoff bubble 
I don't really know what to call it, so I'm just going to call it the bubble, the bubble playoffs. They don't have to go through the same disadvantages that they would have to typically go through in a normal playoff series. And while admittedly the consequences that all of these teams are going through isn't really comfortable, I would say bringing back Yusuf Nurkic and Zach Collins in this current situation would probably be easier than bringing them back in a normal situation where the team is flying from LA to Portland, Portland to LA, flying back and forth, bringing them back into the bubble playoffs and getting them used to playing there, I think is easier than getting them used to playing in a normal series. Not only is the playoff series really to look at, but the Blazers also have an eight game period to really integrate their guys back into the lineup and get them used to playing at game speed again. If the Portland Trailblazers are able to, I think match really is what they should be hoping to be able to do. If they can rely on Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum to match what Anthony Davis and LeBron James bring to the Lakers in terms of scoring and controlling the game, then that makes it, again, even easier for Yusuf Nurkic to come back because he doesn't have to become, you know, immediately the third guy who gets an easy bucket whenever he wants. He can just play within the flow of the game and get his buckets when he wants, get his, you know, play his role and get back to full strength for this squad. I also honestly think that the Portland Trailblazers might even have more depth than the Los Angeles Lakers, especially looking at what the Los Angeles Lakers have lost before the playoff bubble thing <laughs> came back. They lost uh, Rajon Rondo to hand surgery, and Avery Bradley also opted out of playing in the playoff bubble thing. I keep calling it that. Um, but the Blazers didn't really lose anybody. The Blazers only lost Trevor Ariza, and even though they lost Trevor Ariza, they didn't really play with Trevor Ariza very much. I think he only had like 20 games played for the Blazers this season. It wasn't really like he did much for them anyway. Um, but like I said, Anthony Simons and Gary Trent Jr. and even other guys like Caleb Swanigan, you know, they were able to rely on some guys throughout the season to get some playing experience and to keep them ready for the playoffs whenever they came around. When you look at the other side, there was honestly more controversy than good for the Los Angeles Lakers. Whether you look at Kyle Kuzma, who honestly had an okay season, but compared to what many people thought he was going to be for the Lakers this year, he really disappointed and it led to a lot of, you know, whether or not he should play, whether or not he should start, whether he should come off the bench, whether it was, whatever it was, there were more questions surrounding this team than I think they really wanted to have throughout the season. They did have some good things. You know, Dwight Howard played well for this team. JaVale McGee did his thing for the team. They brought in some names like J.R. Smith and the Morris twin. But I don't know really if bringing those guys in on short notice is enough for them to say that they have great depth in the team. And even with them, I don't know if they necessarily have incredible depth. However, with that being said, the advantage of having LeBron James and Anthony Davis on their on your team is that you don't necessarily need to have incredible depth to be able to win 50 plus games like the Los Angeles Lakers did. I mean, they played less than 70 games and still won over 50 games. That's just how incredible LeBron James and Anthony Davis for your team is. And it makes it to where you don't need to have a great playmaker off the bench. You don't need to have incredible shooting. You don't need to have incredible everything when you have LeBron James and Anthony Davis. However, the lack of depth will be a factor in a seven game series. It will be a factor in one of the hardest, you know, playoffs that any team has seen in a long time. The Blazers probably have more depth. They are possibly able to match the two-headed monster that is LeBron James and Anthony Davis with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. And who knows, if enough bounces go their way, if enough things go right for the Trailblazers, they could find themselves winning a seven-game series in six or seven games against LeBron James and the Lakers. With all that being said, that's going to be the video for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. If you didn't like it, make sure you leave a dislike. Any feedback from you guys at this point is much appreciated. 
uh, we're getting back to having sports back in the world. At the time of me recording this, there is a scrimmage going on between the Lakers, or not the Lakers, but the Clippers and the Orlando Magic. So, you know, sports are back. Um, it hopefully is going to turn around with all the bad stuff that's been happening this year in 2020. Uh, but again, that's going to be the video for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a comment if you think there's anything I forgot to talk about. And make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content from me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.